Welcome to Electron Line. And now that we've seen some examples of wave equations, now here we want to know how, when we're given a random equation with some constants, uh, how to graph it, how to find the displacement as a function of position and time, and also how to find the wavelength, the frequency, and the velocity. We've done that before, but not the other thing is where now that we have this equation, how do you find the value for y? Remember, y stands for displacement away from the equilibrium point on a wave, probably from a string. Uh, let's see here. So how do we read that equation? It's always a good idea to write the standard form. So you can say that y is a function of x and t is equal to the amplitude times either the cosine or the sine. It doesn't matter which function we use. Uh, cosine of kx minus omega t. And then right away you can see that in this case k is equal to pi divided by 2 meters and omega is equal to 100 uh, pi hertz. All right, given that, can we figure out what our wavelength, frequency, and velocity is? Hmm, I think we can. Uh, first of all, we know that the constant k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda. Okay, now if we set that equal to the value that we got for k, we can say, well, then this is equal to, two, to uh, pi divided by 2 meters. And so from this, we should be able to figure out what lambda is equal to. Well, first of all, if I separate this from the k, just like that, I just take this portion of the equation, pi, of course, cancels out. I can then flip the equation around so I can say lambda divided by 2 is equal to 2 meters. And, of course, cross-multiply, I can say then that lambda equals 4 meters. And so we solve the first part of the problem. We know what the wavelength is. Okay, we can do the same for the frequency. Uh, looking at this portion of the equation, we know that uh, omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So therefore, the frequency is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. And then again, I know what omega is equal to. Omega is equal to 100 pi hertz. I can plug that in here. So the frequency is equal to 100 pi hertz divided by 2 pi. Now, of course, the pi's cancel out. 2 goes into 150. So the frequency equals 50 hertz. All right, that's the second part of the wave equation that we understand. We know the wavelength of this um, equation, and we know the frequency. All right, the uh, third item we're trying to find is, uh, let's see, the velocity. Well, once we have the frequency and the wavelength, velocity is pretty easy. We can say velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So in this case, the frequency is uh, 50 hertz, the wavelength 4 meters, and so that would be hertz, of course, remember that's 1 over seconds, so 4 times 50 is 200, so the velocity of this wave is 200 meters per second. All right, now just to make things a little bit more interesting, I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to change this to 5 meters, because I just realized my wavelength is 4 meters, and I want to come out to a number that's a little bit different, so let's, uh, let's try that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is evaluate the function, the wave function, for y, in other words, we want to know what the displacement is, at a position 5 meters away from the origin and 5 seconds after the wave started moving to the right. Okay, so for that we're going to plug these values in over here into our equation, right there. So we take our equation this way, so we can write that y when x equals 5 meters and t equals 5 seconds uh, is equal to, we still have our amplitude right there, 0 0.1 meters, times the cosine of, now we'll replace x for 5 meters, so we have pi divided by 2 meters times 5 meters, um, minus 100 hertz, oh, I forgot the pi, can't forget the pi, 100 pi hertz, pi hertz, and then instead of t, we're going to write 5 seconds. Okay, so what does that give us? Well, this is equal to 0 0.1 meters times the cosine of, well, 5 divided by 2 is uh, 2 and a half, so it's 2 and a half pi meters, 2.5 pi, uh, meters cancel out, so it's just 2.5 pi, minus uh, 5 times 100 is 500, so 500 pi hertz and of course seconds times hertz that cancels out so that disappears as well all right at this point we can go ahead and evaluate the cosine of this now again i can simplify this a little bit more so 0 0.1 meters times the cosine of 2.5 pi minus 500 pi that is uh, the cosine of 
497 pi it's a minus, but then of course remember that the cosine of a negative angle is the same as the cosine of a positive angle, so we can get rid of the negative sign right there. It doesn't make any difference. And now we're ready to go ahead and evaluate it. Of course, without a calculator, that would be rather difficult. Now, notice that the angle is expressed in radians. That means we have to convert to radians. And let's see if I remember how to do that. Mode 5. There you go. I'm in radian mode now. And so I plug in 497 times pi equals, that's in radians, now take the cosine of that, so the cosine of that is minus 1, hmm, interesting, so this is equal to 0 0.1 meter times minus 1, so finally my answer is the displacement away from the equilibrium point of this wave, probably a string, is equal to minus 0 0.1 meters. So that would be maximum amplitude in the negative direction of 0.1 meter. So that's the answer for that. Finally, we're supposed to graph this function as well. So let's see if we can graph this. So here's our vertical and horizontal axis. On our horizontal axis, we have the variable x. Vertical axis, we have the variable y. The y describes a displacement. Now notice when uh, there's no phase angle here, so when x is equal to 0 and t is equal to 0, so going back to our uh, standard function right here, so if x is 0 and t is 0, uh, that means the cosine of 0, and of course the cosine of 0 is 1, and we multiply times the amplitude, we get 0 0.1 meter. So 0 0.1 meter is at t equals 0, at x equals 0, that is the location of the displacement of the wave. Now the wavelength is 4 meters, which means that if I go in the x direction, a distance of 4 meters, I've gone through a complete wave or complete cycle. So let's say that's 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters, 4 meters. That means that a wave should look kind of like that. This is a half a wave, this is 3 quarters of a wave, and this is back to where we started. Notice that we're in the very same position here that we were there, one wavelength farther away, so that's 1 lambda from there to there. Notice the maximum displacement will be plus 0.1 meters. The minimum displacement will be minus 0.1 meters, or I should say the maximum displacement in the negative direction. And then, of course, the wave repeats. So we go back to here and here and so forth. And, of course, then when we come back to another complete cycle, we're now at a distance of 8 meters. Now, notice that is only at t equals 0 you find the displacement as a function of x. Now, notice that this wave will be moving to the right because it's minus 100 pi hertz to the right at some velocity. Now, we found the velocity to be 200 meters per second. Now, if the wave moves 200 meters per second and the wavelength is 4 meters, if we divide 4 meters into 200 meters, we get 50 wavelengths. So in one second, this wave travels to the right 50 wavelengths. After 5 seconds, that would be 250 wavelengths. So after 5 seconds, this wave has moved to the right 250 wavelengths. And of course, since it's an integer number of wavelengths, after 5 seconds, the wave look, would look exactly again the same as that. Now, what's interesting here is that I'm trying to verify then that the displacement would be equal to... Um, but we say it was minus 0.1 meter at 5 meters. Now, that doesn't seem to be the case when I graph it like that because it looks like the displacement should be zero. So I have a slight discrepancy here. So let me go take a quick look at that, and I'll be right back to see what might have gone wrong. All right, a quick observation here. Show me that I made a mistake, actually a rounding error. So 500 minus 2.5 is back to 497.5 pi. So if we make this 0.5 pi, then this is not going to be a negative 0.1. It's going to be something different. So now let's plug that into our calculator and see what we get since we're still in radian mode. So we have 497.5 times pi. Now we take the cosine of that. I think it's zero. Hmm, just what I thought it would get because five meters would place me right at this point like that. And of course, then I see my displacement is zero, which is definitely not negative 0.1. But now that I plug the exact 
number in there, then this will go to zero meters and it matches my graph. So that's pretty interesting. Now notice that this is the displacement at five meters at t equals zero, but it's also displacement at five meters at t equals five seconds because after five seconds, moving at 200 meters per second with a wavelength of four meters, that means every second, 200 divided by four is 50 wavelengths. And so after five seconds, the wave has moved to the right 250 wavelengths. And so then the wave would look exactly the same as it did now, five seconds later, with the displacement equal to zero at x equals five meters. So hopefully, that'll give you a much better understanding of how a wave equation works and how you have to read and interpret the various portions of the wave equation. So that's how you do that.